Welcome here from the library of the International Theological Institute in Trumau, Austria. We are here in one of the three remaining towers of the 12th century castle that is the main building of the ITI here in Trumau. And I welcome you on a special day today because this is the second of our series on education at the crossroads and today it is my great privilege to speak with my dear friend and colleague Dr. Bernhard Dorna, the Dean of the ITI. And the first question I have right away for you Bernhard, this is a topic that is very close to both of our hearts, education. And the first question I have for you is when, and maybe you can describe that in some detail, was the moment in your life that you discovered that education is your vocation? And what was it that gave you the conviction that education is your vocation? Yes, the first moment, when I, when I think about it, it is my father, my father. Uh, there's an old Hebrew saying, it says, Avi Mori, that my father is my teacher. And he was a person who was always inspiring me in reading, in, in visiting a museum, theater, music. So this was very present in my family. And I had also uh, the gift or the grace to have very good teachers. Teachers at school or at, school, at university? At, at, at school, at the university. I had a very good teacher in Latin and Greek, whom I loved very much in school. And so we learned so to love the Latin language. What made them great teachers? The, for you? Yes, what made them great teachers for you? First of all, the human approach. This was very, very important. The concern for the, the young, for the, for, mm -hmm. for the, for the student. They loved to be in contact with the students. This was very important. Of course, the knowledge and also the, the, the inspiration which they gave in always looking at the person and having a good view on, on, on the person and, and, and being able to get out what is in the person. Mm -hmm. So the one professor, he, he inspired me so much in reading Latin texts because he loved it so much. Mm -hmm. And in seeing that, I loved it also. And he was not, it wasn't a pressure. It was a kind of joy. It was a kind of elevation, inspiration. So this was my first experience in doing studies mm -hmm. with good professors. And one point is very decisive also at the university. You had a, a, a famous teacher, especially in Judaic studies, Professor Schubert. I have to, naming his name is for me also kind of, reminding the moments. And he said, my student should become better than I in his field. He, his ambition was to, ins again, to inspire, to awake. To and awaken the soul. Yes, the soul. And so that everything is a little bit lifted up in life, what you do. Because he said once to me, the greatest gift what you can receive in life is education. No one can take it away from you, mm -hmm. if you have it. And therefore it is so important. And this inspired me so much because I have received so much mm -hmm. to give it to others and to inspire them what I have received. A little side note to Professor Schubert because you've told me so much yeah. about him. Yeah. He is the person who single-handedly almost reopened the University of Vienna after the Second World War, right? Yes, 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 yes. He was a, a deep, deep devoted Catholic. And he survived in Vienna, although he was not Jewish, his wife was Jewish. And he founded, I have to say, that you, don't, you don't know who he is, he founded the Judaic Studies Institute in Vienna at the University of Vienna, the first in the German-speaking world, the most famous. It became very famous in Israel. He is also very much honored till today in Israel, this professor. So, 
but he did it out of a Christian Catholic conviction. He saw what happened in Vienna uh, with the Nazis and he found a kind of refugium in the writings of the Bible and he wanted to do that in the original language. Mm -hmm. Hebrew, of course, Greek. This is, and so he came into contact not only with the fathers of the church, but also with the tradition of the Jewish world, because the Jewish world was so attacked. Mm -hmm. And he had an understanding about that. There is a mystery behind mm -hmm. that the Jewish world is so attacked. They are the, so he said it always to me, the, the opposite of the Nazis. Mm -hmm. they, are most, they are so, so persecuted. Mm -hmm. And therefore he made a kind of coalition with them, a spiritual coalition, mm -hmm. an intellectual coalition. And he studied in a cellar in Vienna, in, on hidden places, where he could get a, a book in Hebrew and a, a teacher in Hebrew, even Nazi teachers. He didn't say that to him. They, they, know, they knew Hebrew. And he learned that. And after the Second World War, yeah, it happened in 40, 1945, in April, he was resistance in the Catholic resistance and the um, father, a Catholic priest, Strobel asked him to go to the university and to reopen it. At the university was in the section of the Russians. Mm -hmm. He went to the commander Blagodatov, mm -hmm. and this was the Russian com commander in Vienna, and he went to him and said, I got the permission to reopen the, uni the university with the help of the old Austrian flag, mm -hmm. not the Nazi flag. Mm -hmm. Yes, the old Austrian flag. And he was so overwhelmed, this Blagodatov, that he talked a little bit with him and he gave him he gave him the permission. The permission to do that. Yeah. That's quite extraordinary. Yes. Yeah. yes. So his love of learning that he passed on to you as a professor. Yes. He actually put that very literally into action. Yes. By uh, not without risk, I would say. Yes. Uh, already in April 1945. Yes. Yes. The war wasn't even fully over yes, yet. Yes. Exactly. To already uh, yeah. go into. Uh, reopening the university. Yes. That, yeah. That's quite remarkable because it shows his deep love for learning. Deep love and I have to, to, to add something which is very important. The first, the first class which was taught uh, after the ending of the Second World War in Vienna at the University of Vienna was Hebrew. Old oh, Hebrew. isn't that beautiful. Mm -hmm. He did it. Mm -hmm. And one of his students was the famous cardinal in Austria, Austria who passed away. This was Cardinal König. Mm -hmm. That's one of his. Yeah. yeah, it's a remarkable story. In fact, the the quote that uh, goes into yeah. to the second uh, question I have for you today is a quote that also relates in a way to the Second World War. Uh, it is from Dorothy Sayers' *The Lost Tools of Learning* that she published in 1947, and she says something fundamental about education that I would like to speak a little bit about with you now. She says. We who were scandalized in 1940 when men were sent to fight armored tanks with rifles are not scandalized when young men and women are sent into the world to fight massed propaganda with a smattering of subjects and when whole classes and whole nations become hypnotized by the arts of the spellbinder. We have the impudence to be astonished. We dole out lip service to the importance of education, lip service and just occasionally a little grant of money. We postpone the school leaving age and plan to build bigger and better schools. The teachers slave conscientiously in and out of school hours till responsibility becomes a burden and a nightmare. And yet, as I believe, all this devoted effort is largely frustrated because we have lost the tools of learning and in their absence can only make a botched and piecemeal job of it. Yes. This is of course the famous work that uh, many of us know and have read mm -hmm. more than once, The Lost Tools of Learning by Dorothy Sayers, who by the way herself was a, a mystery novelist. Mm -hmm. She wrote mystery novels and I think even detective mm -hmm. novels. 
but she came with this famous essay in 1947. And the reason why I'm, I'm coming with this is because she already in 1947 saw that we have to lost the tools of learning. And we are now actually living in an age where uh, we have seen the past year in fast track the digitization of education, yes. where whole classes, whole universities have been banned, so to say, to go behind the screen for understandable reasons, uh, understandable concerns of health, but which is, I would say, not in itself already a big challenge, mm -hmm. but much more also an image of a much larger picture we see. So my question to you is, if you look at education today, what is your main concern? Yes, the main concern in education today is that we lose our souls. Mm -hmm. uh, this expediency tendency in education, always to do something for the sake of, namely for getting more money, a greater business. And this is not a perspective of education at first. At education in the old tradition, and this is my perspective which we have lost today, is to rediscover the soul, the, the meaning of man, the importance of man. What it means yeah. to be human. What to be, it, yeah, exactly. We know so much about man, you know, what he does, what he wishes, but we don't understand what he means. Mm -hmm. What he means. We have lost the great questions. We live a life in this world as if we would live forever. Mm -hmm. Death is such a burden for man today. They fear all death. This is not a perspective of a good education. There were great questions of the philosophers. One of the great questions was, of course, to overcome death, yeah? but intellectually, spiritually. Which means to accept it. To accept it, to find a way to live with mm -hmm. this reality. Mm -hmm. Today, we don't. We, we push it away. Mm -hmm. So this is, a, for me, a, a very, very serious question, mm -hmm. that we lose the souls of man. We don't know anymore who he is. And our studies are so shallow, mm -hmm. too shallow. For being educated, you need time. You need reflection, reflection, space, mm -hmm. a kind of seeing which is completely different uh, than we do it today. We have a grasping mm -hmm. sight. We mm -hmm. want to grasp, we to get. We quickly want our yes, options. Yes, we want to have that all. This is not the way of, 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 of getting the truth. Mm -hmm. And this is important and I'm very, very concerned about that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting what you say about the soul because we have, you say, we have lost yeah. the soul. We have stopped yes. paying attention to the soul and you put that in connection with man's fear of death in the sense of yeah. wanting to control death. Yeah. Yeah. What's, once again, it's a theme I've spoken about often. I see that the whole response of our world to the current corona crisis is a response where we are again trying to control life and death. Yes. Because we live with the illusion that with more technical measures and with more, te more technology and more interventions, we can actually control something as small and invisible as a virus. Yes. But of course, our successes as we see around us now a year into this crisis are extremely limited. limited yes. And I think that has to do with what you rightly say is because in education our focus is wrong because we're continuously focusing on technicalities, yes. on technical ways of grasping, of controlling. Yes. But what you are saying, if we look at the soul, if we look at the soul at the wide perspective, we can actually, as the philosophers you quote, overcome death, but overcome it in an intellectual way. And in that way, actually, there's, I see a great contradiction in the approach we see in education, because a world that tries to control death, and once again, we're living through that now so strongly, that tries to control life and death, but that actually denies the importance of the soul. 
yes. actually is contradicting itself because if it would pay more attention to the soul, it could overcome death, yes. but not in the technical way, yes. but in the intellectual, spiritual way, in the sense of accepting it as a reality yes. that is an integral part of our life. Yes. Would you agree with yes, that uh, assessment? But yes, I would say. So we concentrate, speaking about the soul, very much about that what we need. You mm -hmm. know, the needs should be fulfilled. But there's also an aspect of the intellect and, and something which has to do with our meaning, with our existence. We are a mystery to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this mystery is forgotten. We are mysteries. That because everyone is in him or herself a mystery. And this is important to see. And therefore you need another kind of sight. Another kind of sight which is connected to the depths of your soul. And great, good education does this work. Mm. And out of that develops a kind of intellect which is far beyond that intellect what we praise today. Mm -hmm. I said it to my students today that, you know, we have such a fascination from science. Today the, the, the virologists mm -hmm. and the scientists are our new gods in a way. But these are gods which make us, as we see it, complete confused. Because this is this opinion, this is that opinion, and we cannot get it what it is uh, said. Because there are to so us. many different opinions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, are, we cannot concentrate, we come not to that clarity. Mm -hmm. And this is so important to have a kind of, what should I say, sobriety mm -hmm. here a distance to that, mm -hmm. in order to breathe again from inside and to, to come to a side, to a perspective in which we get a dignity back. Mm -hmm. What I see today in education, we, we lose our dignity. And this has to do with that we have not any more great persons who guide us. We have no great persons. We have no statesmen. Mm -hmm. We have politicians. A statement is a great word, I would say. Mm -hmm. He guides, he gives a perspective. The same, sorry to say, we find it not in the church. I would like to have some strong statements according to this crisis which we have in the world by, by politicians, not only, but also by, by the leaders of the church. Mm -hmm. And regarding education, if we don't focus and come back to that seriousness of mm -hmm. the human existence, we are lost. Mm -hmm. And I think what we do today here at the ITI is a program which has, is a program of the future in the, mm -hmm. in the present already. Let's speak about the yeah. future because that's yeah. exactly my, my next question. We, we are making an analysis here of what yeah. we see. We are huh, at education is at a crossroads. Yes. We are at a time of crisis, and in this time of crisis in which we are globally, we also see highlighted again the crisis in education. And there it's always very important that we look at the future, yes. look towards the future and say, what can we do? What is our vision for education in the future? And what can we contribute to it? And I would say especially, what can any person of goodwill contribute to it and what in your view would be specifically be the role of Christian institutions yes. of learning. What is your future vision on that regard? On the one hand where we can go and how we can get there. Yeah. The, we, the future is rooted in the past. The future needs to build on the tradition of what is proved in teaching and what, in learning. The great masters of our tradition in philosophy, in theology, but not only in these fields, can need to be rediscovered. These books are locked, more mm. or less. We read, we read bestsellers, but to go back to that to the source, great voices. Yeah, to the you... great voices 
who teach us the questions which are important for us. Mm -hmm. We discover the questions which are important for us today in the books. But someone has to guide us to that. And I can only say support this project. Who listens to that? I don't know who, who is listening to that. This is so, so important that we can, can open mm -hmm. the treasure houses of spirit, the treasure houses of intellect, which is stored up in our tradition. Actually, to, to, to interject here, yeah. a good concrete yeah. example before you continue. I'm currently reading mm -hmm. A masterful biography of John Adams. Yeah. John Adams yeah. is one of the founding fathers of the United States. Mm -hmm. He was the first vice president and then the second president succeeding George Washington. Mm -hmm. And his book is masterfully written because it's based on all the correspondence he had with his wife and yes. with, mm -hmm. with all the people he worked with. And one of the things John Adams say, says, and he himself was the example of such a great voice in history because he was a man of great simplicity, mm -hmm. uh, uh, excellent intellectual formation and deep faith. And um, what you see in what he writes is that he exactly points towards this. He says, the only way in which we can avoid our country becoming enslaved mm -hmm. is if when we form the general population in the virtues mm -hmm. and in intellectual knowing. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. And I find it fascinating because that's, that's exactly, and he had a, you know, a, a beating heart for education. Yes. And he would always come back to that because he said, if we do not educate the population in the yes. virtues and in, in the intellectual life, he would read Cicero with his 12 year old yes. sons. Yes. You know, together they would read Cicero, yes. just to give an example. That's the sort of voices we really need yes. today. And actually, I find it very fitting to be reading that now and all the upheaval we've seen in the United States, yes. especially in the past uh, months. Is it that sort of voices that you are yes. referring to? Yes, the, the sources which have the strength mm -hmm. to shift to to shift our perspectives back you know right. we are so much interested to with the needs of life mm -hmm. we need to be interested in the ends of life right in the great goals the great tell telloi the ends what are the the ends of human existence and i think this is done in the great masters you mm -hmm. find that everywhere and and but you need a kind of artistic quality and intellectual quality of course you need to learn that but also to 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 guide people to that world mm -hmm. that it becomes attractive again this is uh, so important so that the the the, the not the vices but more the virtues are a longing for man mm -hmm. a longing to develop the sense of longing to live a a life according to, to an ob objective truth. But how can we interest the masses of young people for this? Because they are living in a world of permanent distraction. Yes. Yeah? That's the whole world around us. Yes. It's a world of permanent distraction uh, through, the, uh, through the, all the electronic devices that yes. we have and that beep and that ring and that continuously yeah. draw our attention and then all the social media and all the opinions and everything we we apparently need to know or hear all the time so there's a lot of distraction yes and then at the same time this enormous focus on skills all the time yeah, it's 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 often one one has this sense that the whole of society is directed towards getting people to become as quickly good producers and good consumers yes. and that's uh, so how can we draw young people out yeah. of this and make them see that what first and foremost is needed yes is the liberation of their soul yes and that's also what liberal education is about Liberal. it's about liberating the soul yeah. uh, it's about as you said before 
bringing out of the human being that what is already there, yeah. but that lies hidden. Yeah. And that's a beautiful word of uh, St. Thomas More who said yes. that. Bringing out the pearl that is already in the human being, awakening yeah. the soul, liberating it from all the you know, yeah. unnecessary decorations that are around it. How do we grasp that attention away from the world of distraction? I think by good teachers. Mm -hmm. Good teachers who have been in, in, this, in this land and can give a kind of message. Mm -hmm. This is important. Young people need to see. They need witnesses. Uh, then it becomes attractive. Mm -hmm. If you see a person who has been in the promised land, so I say that, and he comes back from the promised land and shows the promised land by his existence and by that what he speaks, they become attractive. Mm. I, this is my experience. I saw my teacher experience is that. I saw it in a teacher. And such teachers are precious. Mm -hmm. And we need to find them. We need to develop them. We need to give them the possibility to come out and to do that. I think this is the way that the distraction goes away. This is not, um, not interesting anymore. If you really read a good book, for example, Plato, or, and you have studied it once, some lines and translated it, really translated it, you have struggled with the text. And the text speaks to you. And you see, this is a communication, and someone has introduced you into that, how to do it. You need to do it by someone who is able to do it. Mm -hmm. And then it comes automatically. You are distracted, not anymore, by, by, by such, yeah, I would say, outside things. Mm -hmm. But it begins the formation of the inner person and of personalities. So this is my, way, my answer to that. You need examples. And a very port, important element is also a teacher who has enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Enthusiasm. We cannot live in such a primitive world where we have not enthusiasm. We don't need entertainment. Mm -hmm. We need a deep enthusiasm which comes out of spirit. This is attractive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a noble attitude. How can we encourage more teachers to let go of, you know, all the restraints yeah. Yeah. and to allow this enthusiasm to burst onto the scene? Yeah, it, first of all, it needs to be in the, in the teacher by himself or herself and, and if someone's a teacher of mine, if we talk with the professors and I see that one professor is very much, very much moved by a text. Mm -hmm. So I force that. I said, please tell it to me. What is it? Mm -hmm. What is that what makes you so enthusiastic about it? Explain it to me. So we need time to have conversations, dialogues, community mm -hmm. to, to talk about such things. This is like a musician who talks with another musician about a piece of music. Uh, so if the teachers do that, then others will listen to that. So there's a climate, there's a climate of intellectual life, mm -hmm. which is natural then. Mm -hmm. And we, we, the Catholic Church especially, we have lost that. that uh, my professor Schubert said it always. We have lost the intellectual life. Mm -hmm. The, 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 the richness of the intellectual right. life. And therefore we go to the, to, we are distracted, we go to, mm -hmm. the, to the secondary sources. Mm -hmm. We don't do, you don't do that if you are really in touch with, with gold. Mm -hmm. so, so really what, what needs to be done to get teachers, professors to really be inspiring, yes. to be enthusiastic, so to so to say, pull in the young yes. people for this. Yeah. We actually need to work harder to create a truly intellectual environment. Yes. yes. And yeah. that environment we create in institutions like yes. these, 
but also in initiatives we take in the church, yes. is that there is a healthy intellectual environment. Yes, inspired by the sources of the tradition, inspired also by that what the church offers to us, the liturgical life. By the, the beauty. The beauty of the church, the year of the church, the right. saints. The, the saints are great masters of the intellect. Mm -hmm. Even if they sometimes are not very educated, mm -hmm. but they have an intellect which is inspired. Mm -hmm. yeah? Not all the saints are uh, theologians, or, but a saintly person has an inspired intellect. And this is always interesting. Mm -hmm. This is always attractive. Mm -hmm. So all these sources we need to use in order to create again a life of intellect, of, uh, an intellectual life which is blossoming. Beautiful. I think that's a beautiful way to conclude this yes. session. We have to reinvigorate and recreate an intellectual yes. life that is blossoming yes. and in which the church plays, can play, if it chooses to do so, a very important role by the beauty that it brings yes. in, especially the beauty of the liturgy, yes. the beauty of the lives of the saints and the inspiration yes. they are and the beauty of the whole tradition of the church. Yes. If all that is brought in, that only enriches the intellectual life. Yes, yes. Thank you, Bernard, for this Thank very you, inspiring conversation. Thank you, Christian, for asking me. Thank you. Thank you.